Hi there. Well, welcome. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, coffee club time of the writer and what a wonderful thing it is to be. And I, I feel I should be drinking coffee, but in fact, I'm drinking tea. But it's wonderful to be sharing with you all you book lovers and all you festival goers. So welcome. Welcome. We've got a wonderful hour ahead of us. We're going to be hearing about one of my personal favorite pieces of literature ever. And um, let me just quickly tell you what it is. It's Mother to Mother, in case you didn't know, in the unlikely event that you didn't know about Mother to Mother. It's a book, it's a set work, it's a play, it's a documentary. It's about one mother's story to a mother, another mother's story. It's the story, a fictionalized story of Amy Beale. We're gonna be talking to Sindhiwe herself. We're gonna be talking to other role players, but before we do any of that, I think what's really is important is that we need to thank all the people who've made the Time of the Writer Festival possible this year and each and every year. They are the funders and the partners without which, without whom we absolutely wouldn't be there. So we wouldn't be here. So let me tell you and give hearty thanks to the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the National Department of Arts and Culture, the KwaZulu-Natal Department of Arts and Culture, the French Institute of South Africa, the Stand Foundation, very important organization, the Foundation for Human Rights, the National Institute for the Humanities and Social Sciences, as well as, well as a Marswi Museum for South African Literature, media partner being Mbiza, Journal for African Writer, and the technical partners who are doing wonderful work behind the scenes. You can't see them, but they are Hear My Voice. So it's um, it's a heck of a lineup. It's really, it's a wonderful thing that this festival is going ahead. I think everybody's learned a lot of lessons from last year. So without any further ado, just to warm you up as it were, Mother to Mother started life, its first iteration was a book. After that, it became a play. It's since become a documentary, which in itself is a piece. We're going to witness just 10 minutes of it. So sit back and enjoy, and then I will introduce you to our panelists. Over to you guys. My son killed your daughter. mother because I had never before felt pain for a killer's mother and the character all he said is my son and everybody's son
Mother to Mother is a book I wish I never had to write. And if I were braver, I would not have written the book. The book is fiction, but what made me write the story is something that is not fiction. It's a terrible, terrible reality. The murder of a young girl, Amy Bill. Violence solves nothing. We all feel sad, sorry for the victim's family. Of course, I feel sorry for the Bill family. I feel horrified they had lost their child. And the more I read about Amy Bill, the sadder I got. Because to all accounts, she was such a good-hearted person. That's why she was in this country, because of her good heart. At the same time that we had the elections, the four young men who were accused of killing Amy Bill were on trial. And then Lindy West says to me, do you know one of those four boys is non Tutu Zelo's son? <gasps> Which non Tutu Zelo? Lindy West says, non Tutu Zelo, non Tutu Zelo, meaning the one we know. There's only one non Tutu Zelo we know. The shock went right through my body. The next thing that came out of my mouth was, how is she coping? Until that moment in my life, I had never thought about the family of a killer. Never. Do you? No. If you had not known, the mother of the perpetrator would you still have felt sad for her. I felt sad for her, for the life that never really became what it was meant to be. Everybody here has a gift. And your job as a young person is to make sure that gift becomes reality. If you're doing what you were meant to do, you cannot escape happiness. Now, that's going to bring me to one last question before we touch on chapter five. This novel is entitled Mother to Mother. That's a very profound title. I think it says quite a lot. A deafening roar overhead stopped us in our tracks. All sense of play fled. Heads jerked up, eyes fall to the furiously bleeding sky. Okay? Imagine you are at home and suddenly you see this plane. And what does it do? It drops down pamphlets notifying the residents of Flow Play that they are going to be forcibly removed. I gave Tembi mother to mother as a present. And then a week or so later, she calls me. I read the book, I love it, I want a one woman show. I said, okay, I'll make a one woman show. So I made a play, said, now you take it and do whatever. So she liked it and she said, I'm going to talk to Janice. And that's how it started. Yes, and beware, couch interview, take one. <laughs> I wrote the lyrics that opened the play, you know, but when Tembi sings them, I, I can't help crying. <laughs> she sings them with such feeling and they, they sound different. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. Oh, you know. What Tembi and Janice did, it was for me quite a young, electrifying real experience. I was working as, as a nanny at the beachfront in Devon, and after work I would go and rehearse. And my parents said, if you come home and the door is locked, don't even bother to knock. You tell us you are acting. What is that? Acting. You can hardly tell us stories here in the house. And, and you tell, you're telling us people are going to pay to watch you 
talk, talking about what? They didn't understand because even though we're performing in those theaters, they couldn't go to watch us so they can, you know, see what we were doing. So to them, it was just like... A57, B29, take two, 10 B. You want to know where I came from? <laughs> I was born in Durban, but grew up in the countryside of KwaZulu Natal. The little village called Saboza. It is the right thing to do. Okay, stop for a minute, Thames, just to place more carefully. Mm. I can't believe that her daughter is dead because of my son. Yeah. So, so even that you're facing out, that you, mm. that we can all see into your eyes, and that that is the theme of the play. That is the. I can't believe that your daughter is dead I can't because of my son. She's it's one her daughter because of my son. Yeah. So we're talking about one mother and another mother yeah. and the son and the daughter. Okay, okay. so that that's there. your that's your first underline. Yeah, and it's not into the audience's eyes, but it's just so that they can see your face. The eyes are the window to the soul. Yeah. I think I've said okay. that to every actor I've ever worked with. <laughs> <laughs> can we take that cue from the top again? Tembi's gonna give you the cue. The same schools they are burning today, Aibo. Let me see. Mother to mother, when I read it and I saw how beautiful it was done, it just spoke to me and I saw myself telling the story on stage. It speaks to people in different ways, to young and old. Mothers, especially the mothers, they will come to me, they say, you know, I felt like your voice was my voice, you were talking to me. And young people as well, they see themselves as that little policy. God, you know my heart. God, you know my heart. Whether it's Amy Beale or whether it's the young policy, you see both sides of the story. And I think that's where Cindy has been very clever. Janice interview, take one. And it's such a good presentation of the other side of the story, which is a young man who's had all the frustrations of growing up in the township and whose life has been deprived by the system, not by his mother at all. His mother, as we see in the play, knows him, loves him and looks after him. But just to hear another perspective on it instead of the, you know, the irresponsible, violent, student protests that kill people you know it's i don't i don't ever condone the killing but i do understand how the frustration can build up so that that kind of thing in mob hysteria can happen Well, that is just a taste of Mother to Mother, the documentary. And I feel I feel sad that we have to stop it at that point. And I really do urge you um, to take some time to watch that documentary because it is it is very powerful on so many levels, as is the book, as is our lovely Cindy Way's book, Mother to Mother, which was written back in 1998, let me tell you, which was already five years after the death of Amy Beale. For those of us, as I say, in the unlikely event that you don't know of the story, it's literally from one mother to another mother. But I'm going to introduce you to our panelists because I think that we've we've got a great deal to say here. Um, I'm going to start with Yvette. Yvette Hardy, lovely to see you there. And Yvette is a theatre director. She's a real all-rounder. She's a theatre director, producer, educa educator and advocate focusing on theatre for young audiences, which is very, very key. We're going to be hearing a little bit more about that now, but also again on Friday. Um, she initiated the launch of ACITES South Africa, the International Association for Theatre for Children and Young People back in 2007, visionary. Um, she's the organization's director and she's also currently president of the International Assetage, uh, I think in her last year, in fact. Um, and we're going to be finding out from her what her role is in the Mother to Mother, the documentary, but also what she feels about it personally, because I think there's a, a lot to say it touches all of us as, as parents, as mothers, as potential mothers. Next, let me introduce you to Janice Honeyman, who is a veteran of the stage. 
She is, she's worked in, listen to this, she's worked in theatre locally and internationally for 50 years. That's half a century, Janice, you don't look a day over 21. And she's a founder member of the Market Theatre. She's, um, her range is huge from popular productions, opera, operetta, musicals, body runs, children's theatre and educational drama to the great classics and plays that deal with a deep concern for social issues, which is why I think this particular piece has spoken to her. And Janice, I was watching your face as you were listening to Tembi singing there and I could feel what you were feeling. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing your personal take on it. By no means least is our very own Cindy Wee, our national treasure, Cindy Wee Magona. She is, um, she is, an, how can I even begin? We could be here all afternoon if I were to describe all her various attributes, but she's an activist. She's the author of many, many books, not least of which is Mother to Mother, as I say, written back in 1998. Um, and her, uh, her, she's written across many disciplines. She's written for stage. She's written for children's books, countless books. Um, and she has many, many awards, including honorary doctorates from Hartwick College in the States, Rhodes University, Nelson Mandela University, and the Order of Ikamanga right here in South Africa. Interesting that in her biography, um, Cindy Wee says that she holds all life sacred, especially the environment, our Mother Earth. And I think that she's something of an Earth Mother herself. So I'm really honored to speak to you all. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Um, missing from this lineup, sadly, is Tembi and Charlie Jones. I don't know that she was ever going to be part of it, but Tembi, you saw her there and you heard what Cindy Wei had to say that Cindy Wei gave her a copy of Mother to Mother. Um, Tembi read it in just a week and said, I want to do this play. And um, for those of you who don't know much about Tembi and Charlie, and Charlie Jones, she herself has written a book, or at least Cindy Wei wrote Tembi's story in a book called Theatre Road. And she alluded there to how her parents were not happy about her being an actress, which is another story, which is another play, which is another documentary and another time for the time of the writer festival conversation. So I'm going to, I think I have confessed already that this has been one of my all time favorite books. I remember when I first read it, I thought this is groundbreaking. It's shared not just the story of one mother to another mother, it's shared so many untold stories that so many people, particularly women, have never heard before. And I think that it's, it's, it's beyond important. And it's, its role in not just then, but over the, over the years and its role in the future is something that we're also going to unpack. So Cindy, we, let me start with you. Um, I think what we also want to cover if we have time is that is the translation of something, the written word from page to stage and all the transitional periods in between, not to mention making a documentary and you know, the manner in which you, you took your very, your very uh, intense book and managed to work it into a one woman play. It's, it's a, phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal process. So, but I'm going to start at the beginning and ask you to cast your mind back to 1998. It was probably before 1998. In fact, it was probably around about the time that Amy Beale was killed in 93. And you revealed to some of the learners there what you felt, how you were, you were so moved um, at the plight of the woman whose son had killed Amy Beale, one of them. What was in your mind? What was it that you had in mind to do with Mother to Mother? You could just uh, unmute you yourself. Uh, just unmute I yourself. Unmuted myself. Great. I have. Can you hear can me? Hear you. Loud and clear. Okay. Before I, I even get into answering your question, I spoke to this afternoon. She was on her way back to Durban, uh, and she said, greetings to everybody. Lovely. From Kembi. Um, the, the play is really a gift from Tembi. I had no idea of writing, making it into a play, just as I had no idea of, of, of doing the book, the novel. When I heard of what had happened, August 1993, I was still working at the UN. Of course, I was, I was saddened. I was grieved. And as I say, had I been a bolder person, I would have sought the bills and spoken to them I'm a coward and didn't, I didn't even think of it. You know, shut my shoulders and like everybody else, I felt very sad for them. 
I come back for the elections. I'm here for six weeks. At the airport going back, Lindy will tell me this, this horrible thing. That was the foreign man is somebody's child, somebody I played with. I have never been that close to this kind of horror. For the first time in my life, I felt this. Sindiwe, I'm not sure. Sindiwe, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but your sound is coming I and can. going. Okay, we're going to keep trying. Okay. Okay, uh, if you can just unmute yourself, Sindiwe. Okay, I tell you what I'm going to do just so we've uh, got that sorted. Janice, I'm going to go straight to you if you could unmute yourself because your um you came in on the book as a play um because as a, as a result of tembi saying i would like a one woman play had you read the book and had you seen the script what was your initial feeling about the piece well i i had read the book and i'd loved the book um uh, previously and then tembi brought me cindy Ware's adaptation um and asked me to direct it. And, you know, I'd worked often with Tembi and Tembi and I work very closely. We understand each other. We old sisters together. And um, when I looked at it and knew the book, I said, this is great. We can do something fantastic with this. But does Cindy we understand that we are going to take it and juggle and juxtapose and change the order? We're going to take some of the book that's not very specifically the mother's story and her attitude to her son and discard that because we've got to fit it into 90 minutes. And, but I was very, very excited about doing it. And obviously having lived through the whole Amy Beale situation, having been in Cape Town through all of that period um, and having known Eric Miller, a very good friend of mine whose photographs were used in, in the show and we'd spoken a lot about it. I mean, he was there the day Amy died. He was at the Caltex garage, you know, and um, so it became a very personal experience. And I knew that it could make a wonderful page to the stage adaptation um, and can move from black and white writing into almost a full color, graphic novel into animation, into the detail that we see in a movie, the visual detail, into something that's really rich on a stage. And I thought, yes, this is the one we're going to do. As, as, as a, uh, a drama person, as a theatre person, you would have that vision. It seems to me, I've just recently reread the book and there's so much in it. I thought, oh my goodness, how did Cindy Wei manage to put aside some of those elements? but how did you manage to evoke them? Because with the clever use of um, what you've put on the stage and the backdrop and the screens and all those things, you've managed to make another layer. Just, just explain that process. Well, the, the thing about it is that knowing, as I said, that you have to condense it into 90 minutes, you have to decide whose story is it? Is it Khaleesi's story? Is it Mandisa's story? And I believe it is being called mother to mother, Mandisa's story. And so one needed to take what was particularly pertinent and relevant to her journey through that day and the time after um, and, and use that as an emphasis. And so what Sindiwe has done in the book is, is it's just a brilliant, you see Sindiwe, she doesn't mind talk, me talking about her as if she's not here, but she's brilliant. And she is a historian. She's an educationalist. She's an incredibly sensitive woman. And she's also a very, very good writer and can create characters very well. For me, what's fascinating about it and what we decided to leave out was where Sindiwe was being the educator and the, the poetess, she's also a poetess, and trying to say, okay, how do we take those descriptive bits and turn it into action on the stage? And it meant condensing considerably, but knowing everything that the book is, you enrich it by just remembering that and, and 
trying to transfer as much of the atmosphere as you can, but keeping it within the mother's story and not necessarily Cindy Ware's comments, although it is, it is a one woman show. And so everything that's said is within the character of, of Mandisa. But sometimes there's stuff that you, you, you have to discard because you think at this moment, the story's got to push forward. So you Which hone. Yes, and, and what you also did, you honed Tembi, who is a wonderful piece of, of clay to hone, if that's the right analogy, because she, she has this range inside of her. And, and it was interesting to hear um, Cindy Way say in the, in the documentary that she said, although she wrote those, I mean, that, that piece about God, you know my soul, um, it, it's such a haunting piece of music. And Cindy Way says herself, and, and she's, she's back with us, that Tembi put something else in there. And just that little bit that we see you directing her and say, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. She, it's as if she went into another world herself. It was almost, I mean, we see her with the head wrap and we see her getting herself into the zone. How much involvement do you have? Or is that very much something that only one woman can do? It's a, you know, the secret of, of mother to mother and we've lived with it as Yvette knows for many, many, many years, is that you merge as, uh, um, you merge as a force between Sindiwe, Tembi and myself and Yvette, a lot of help from Yvette and then Marilyn van Rennen and um, the, the, the director of the film, but you actually pull together to, to tell one part of the story. And I had just worked with Naomi Younger um, who is a composer and musician, I'm sure you know Neo, um, on The Tempest. And we decided, because in the book, that first section is, it's in italics in the book, and it's a really strong message from Sindiwe. And that needed to be integrated into the very soul of the woman. And Tembi being a singer, and Neo being the musician that he is, we merged that, and you know, Tembi always sings from the heart. And Tembi is a mother. Tembi could imagine, you know, you in in adaptation and in drama, in characterization, you pull the character that you're playing and yourself closer and closer and closer until it becomes one person. And so Tembi's experience and knowledge of being a mother, of loving, of having frustrating children, all the rest of it crosses over into Mandisa and Tembi particularly understands Mandisa as well, the other way around. Indeed she does, or Mandy as her, as her employer likes to call her. Sindiwe, <laughs> you're back, lovely to have you back with us. Cindy, I want to come back to the beginning and the rationale behind writing this book because in that little clip from the documentary, you say Nkolisi is my son, He's everybody's son. And in a way, although you were talking to the mother of the fictionalized boy who actually killed Amy Beale, to, it's a fictionalized story, you were looking at the broader picture. It's almost like you wanted to talk to all mothers who might be on either side of this particular fence. Were you very conscious of that? Or, I mean, how did, you, how did you manage to let that story flow? If well, you could just... depends. It starts mm -hmm. from realizing that Nkolisi's mother could be me. I've been so lucky. We grew up. I have been. Our tradition, I am not a traditionist, but I am not one who says we must chuck all tradition away. Sifting our ancestors was stupid. Some of the things they did serve them and they might serve us. It's looking at how we dealt in the village with that kind of situation. And from that, you know, you say, in this village that is South Africa, this is how we should be dealing with this kind of, uh, you know, conflict. The side is done wrong should go to the other side. And the other side, when somebody comes to say, I am sorry, you have Ubuntu says, you must accept it. 
and work at reconciliation. That's the basis of Ubuntu. Put yourself in the other's shoes and say, were it me, I would have loved to restore order and peace because we belong. That's the story. Cindy, wait, we'd love to see your lovely face. Are you able to give us your video again? Can you, can we, can you get video? there's a little thing on the bottom left-hand corner or perhaps you can get Choco to do it. Just, not, not yet. And the only reason I have to say that we want to see Cindy Way particularly is because she wears these wonderful head wraps. And the head wrap story, Janice, you'll know this in the in the play, is very key. Uh, how Tembi uh, in the documentary. The whole, Are you there, Cindy Way? Can we try and see you? I think the host has stopped the picture so that the voice okay. can stay. That's absolutely fine. Then let's stay with that. So, Cindy, where you say that you're not a traditionalist, okay. and yet you are very conscious of how tradition has uh, impacted and continues to impact young people in particular, young people who are trying to move forward in their lives, um, and listening to you talk to school children as you do in the documentary. It's, it, and I've heard you say in the past that traditions are dynamic, traditions need to change. But reading Mother to Mother, looking at Mother to Mother, it almost feels like nothing has changed. What's your take on that? You know, in, in, in time changes everything. We just have made a conscious effort to choose what it is we keep and why, and what it is we throw away and why we go really, really forward. Just to say, oh, that's tradition and that's backwards. And in doing that, we have hurt ourselves and put ourselves in, in jeopardy because some of the things needed a little bit of tweaking. Indeed. I, I want to ask you, Cindy, when I tried to look it up, did you it's ever actually- change. Okay. Cindy, did you ever get to meet Linda Beale, Amy's mother? Not once, not twice. We, we met, Peter Beale was still alive. The second time we, we met, we met, you know, they were, you know, the, the year the book came out in 98, 99. 98 or 99, they were invited to the UN General Assembly to talk on human rights in Southern Africa. And then they would accept if I would be. I think we, I think we might be battling with Cindy Wobe, which is such a huge shame. Yvette, I'm going to come to you because the concepts in, in Mother to Mother, whilst they're very obvious, um, you know, one boy, his life has just gone haywire. He ends up doing this deed or is accused of doing this deed. They're very, very difficult. And awkward conversations to have with young people who should be living a much happier life. You have been instrumental in bringing Mother to Mother, the play, largely to young people. How have they responded to it? And, and have you felt a little bit awkward about showing them this, which is so sore? How do you feel about it? Um, goodness, well, it certainly is, uh, it's it's a very painful topic, of course, but I think it's such a vital, vital topic because um, young people really need to understand where we've come from as a country and the kinds of stories that are that their parents, their grandparents are carrying with them, the kinds of experiences um, that they've had. And often people find it very difficult to talk about those things on a personal level. But here you have access to this deeply personal, incredibly moving and very beautifully told experience which really gives you a window into that that world um, and you know you were saying um, you were asking Sindhu the question about whether things have changed or not and of course it, so in so many ways things haven't changed and yet on another level things have changed and I think that this um, this story really al allows one to investigate that that question um, and for, for young people to to understand where they've where they where our country has come from so I, I don't feel 
that, um, you know, I don't feel in any way shy about showing this production to young people. I want every young person in South Africa to see it, frankly, because I think that it really brings history to life in a very personal way. And so often, you know, I remember for myself as a young South African when I was growing up in apartheid with all of that propaganda shoved at us, you know, it was the Groot Trek, it was the great trek that we were taught over and over and over again at school. And, you know, we all hated it. And, um, and of course, today, um, the unfortunate reality is that it's apartheid, which is taught in schools over and over again, and that children are saying, I don't want to hear the story. I'm, I'm sick of it. We did it, you know, last year. I don't need any more of this. But what this story does is it cuts through all of that, the kind of resistance to the history by taking you straight into the heart of a person with whom you can identify, who could be your mother, could be your grandmother. Um, telling a story of a young person who could be you, you know, and and I think that is very very powerful for young people to experience. Definitely more powerful, I would surmise, more powerful on the stage than on the page. Um, in in the documentary, we see a clip of one of the teachers reading a bit, or uh, you know, encouraging the children to read it. And there's something about a book, and I have to tell you that my copy of Mother to Mother is quite literally falling apart. Um, I think it's one of the original ones, but you know, there's something for a lot of children, books are so yesterday. Um, and, and I'm wondering if this whole mother to mother experience is a way of looking, taking books and thinking, let's put them on the stage. Let's put them on their cell phones. Let's move this whole thing forward. W what's your feeling on that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it's, very unfortunate that reading is um, so undervalued and <laughs> underutilized by young people, but nevertheless, that is often the reality. And and young people do respond uh, often more to visual media or to uh, to film, to or to live theatre. And I think that one of the things that Tembi brings in this particular role is this huge authenticity and huge compassion, which is just, I mean, uh, you know, anybody who's experienced her her live in this performance will will know what I'm talking about where you you feel completely embraced by the spirit of this person um it is just extraordinary and so i think that you can't fail to be touched by that you know yeah. so for me um it really does assist young people to understand the story but in a very dynamic very direct kind of way indeed and we watch in the documentaries I keep referring back to it but in the documentary we see the faces of those children or those mm -hmm learners as they're actually watching it and you can see some of them especially the young men somehow they seem to be sort of quite um you know quite impressed impassioned by the whole thing did you learn anything from i mean you have a panel janice you and, and yvette and tembi have a panel discussion in fact uh, cindy way as well uh after the 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 play the performance what were some of the comments that the children made anything that made you think hmm, we could do this differently um, well, I'm uh, trying to think about specifics. I don't know, Janice, if you want to jump in here. Yeah, Janice, anything uh, that made you think, hmm, I, we should think differently well, about this? I don't know that it made us think, think differently, but thought we could extend. We must go further with this. We went, mm -hmm. you know, we took the show um, to Bermuda, mm -hmm. where everybody wears shorts, and uh, it was great. it was great being there because we played to a young a group of 15, 16, 17 year old people and we had a Q&A afterwards and it was one of the most dynamic Q&As I've ever been in because they stood up and they said, but this is our story as well. And we said, well, why? You know, you know there's, is there apartheid in Bermuda? And they, they assured us that there was in its own way. Um, but that there had been times when the children had got together and fought against it. And they had their leaders who were doing it. And those leaders were in the audience. So it was an extremely lively and immediate kind of conversation. And it meant a huge amount to them. And I, I, you know, I sort of thought, well, Yvette knows about this, but we've done a one woman show. But I was looking at when I was sort of re-looking at, at it because we did it a long time ago, um, re-looking at it for, for this chat. I was thinking, you know, in the days when we could afford it, we would probably have done an eight to 10 to 11 to 12 
cast and played all of the stuff and played the march and played Khaleesi. And um, it would have been very alive in that way for a young audience because they would then relate to the young people in it. What we had to work on very carefully with Tembi was her predicament with her son, which is a predicament that many, many parents have with their children, but make sure that it wasn't judging the children. Make sure that it wasn't criticizing the children, that the conflicts between Khaleesi and his mother are real and are actual mother-son altercations. And then it goes completely wrong and horrific in, its, in the extension of it. And so, um, I mean, I, the way I think we could do it if we did it again was to be playing the mother and maybe some more people in the, in, in the cast. I'm yeah. not sure. And yeah. we hope to teach them the history with those photographs and the video clips that we did. Can I yeah. just go back on something quickly, oh. Nancy, that, that you asked and Cindy, we disappeared. Um, we had one performance. You asked her about whether she knew Linda. Um, we had one performance on maybe it was Heritage Day, Havet, or it wasn't the Day of Reconciliation. I remember it was hell of a hot. And we were in um, the theatre and Linda came to see the show yeah. for the first time. And she sat centre, three rows back. So Tembi's table was exactly opposite her. And I've never in my 52 years in the theatre had such an immediate experience because then it just had to live as Mother Tembi to Mother Linda. And suddenly we were all witness to Linda responding to what Tembi was saying to her. And it made a completely different piece of theater. It was unbelievably tense and unbelievably moving. And I mean, we, everybody was choked up. And it just showed me the power of theater when theater really can speak to people. And yeah. it would be great if we could manage to speak to young people in that kind of, in those terms. Yeah. So understand their world and talk directly to them. Yeah, Tembi makes reference in the documentary to actually performing with Linda Beale in front of her. And I thought, oh, I, I don't know how one would even do that. Um, but Linda Beale has been extremely, both Linda and Peter Beale have both been extremely forgiving. The young men themselves, they got amnesty at the TRC. I'm longing to f find out what Cindy Way had to say about that. But alas, another day, we're going to speak to Cindy Way again on Friday about uh, reconciliation in schools, which would be lovely. But you mentioned that you know back. her in the... Sorry. Nancy, I think Cindy Way is back. Cindy Way, are you there? Kind of, if you can oh. hear me. <laughs> Okay. Ah, okay. We can't see you, but we but can. I, I can't. The picture can't come back. It's been blocked. No, don't worry. We we love it that okay. you're even there, Cindy. We was just saying, you know, that the four young men got amnesty at the TRC, and we were just. I don't know if you heard it, but we were talking about the time that um, Tembi was performing and Linda Beal was there. The Beals forgave I the boys. Yeah, everything. Was, oh, mm -hmm. good. So the whole Amy Beale Foundation was born out of this, but what was your feeling about the boys receiving amnesty? And just one other thing that Janice mentioned, that in your book, nowhere do you judge the young people, but you do judge the parents. There's a line where you say, your daughter has paid for the sins of parents who didn't ensure that their sons had a life worth living. And I think that's a very, very strong statement. So there are two questions there. Firstly, what was your feeling on the young men who killed Amy Beale getting amnesty? His reaction was he wished that, you know, South Africa would give these young men the support they so that we could live worthwhile lives. Yeah, Cindy, I, I think we're really struggling to hear your pearls of wisdom. But one of the things, again, you say in the documentary, you, you uh, urge the children that you talk to at the schools, the learners that you talk to, you say, 
you have a gift in whatever it is you need to live a really good life. And that's what's important. Yvette, just coming yes. back, just... Yvette, coming back to something that you said, um, in fact, offline, as it were, and we were talking about what the impact of the whole, the book, the set work, the documentary, the play, the whole thing, and you said one of the things about it was that it's um, potential to cross cultures, ages, mm. genders, and I thought mm. that was so interesting. Janice just told us the Bermuda story, but I think that this yeah. has been elsewhere, so it's not just the ghastly situation that we find ourselves as a result of apartheid in South Africa. There are all sorts of other issues, relationships, um, breaking away, changing traditions. Just, just tell us your feeling on that. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the play has traveled pretty widely. Um, it's it's traveled to many different cultures. I mean, Janice spoke about Bermuda, but it's also been to the Edinburgh Festival, it's been to the Netherlands, it's been, you know, it's been all over the place. And it's, and it's been within different contexts within South Africa as well. It's been, you know, at the Baxter Theatre, at the National Arts Festival, it's been in schools in a number of different contexts uh, on the ground. So um, we've really had an opportunity to see how the play um, is received by people from very different uh, backgrounds. And I think that this thing that I was talking about earlier of um, the, the sort of the empathetic response that audiences have, regardless of where they come from, everybody can kind of feel, feel their way into the story somehow. So if you're a young person, you know, then you, you maybe you, you, you're more of the Amy Beale character or more of the Polisi character. Uh, if you're an older person, you know, it's, uh, maybe you see yourself as Mandisi or you see yourself as the mother who's lost this child. But we've had so many people responding on a very personal level to the production, how it brought up their own feelings of loss or their own need to forgive or their own need for forgiveness. Um, so it seems to just speak to the heart, regardless of who you are and where you come from. And it's going back to the theatrical aspect of it. You know, you mentioned that you threw in there the Tempest that I think you did with um, what's that incredibly famous man? Yes, Sir Anthony Sher. Yes. Well, yes. Dr. John Carney, to be pretty Yes, Dr. John Carney, yeah. even more famous. So, um, yeah. and I'm just thinking this thing about taking great literary works or even not such great literary works and turning them into theatre. Is this perhaps a way forward, notwithstanding that theatres are closing as we speak, um, heartbreakingly, but do you think that this is the way forward to make, you know, with, with great sadness about the, people just don't have the time for books so much anymore. I can't believe that I'm saying that, but it seems like it might be the case. But the th there's something about the theatre which is so visceral, it's so direct. Do, do you think it's something we should be doing, could be doing more of? Nancy? You, I didn't intend to bring my hobby horse to here, but you brought it and I'm going to get onto it. <laughs> I think that adaptation and putting books on a stage is absolutely crucial. First of all, you will sell more books than you would have if it hadn't been there. In my career, I think I've done 27 adaptations of prose, things like Shirley Goodness and Mercy, Fatma, I've done uh, Eggs to Lay Chickens to Hatch, which hasn't been performed yet, but um, it is a way of getting literature and the word, the spoken word, through to people. And I mean, even, you know, doing adaptations of, say, Romeo and Juliet. I, I once did a Romeo and Juliet where we change the words, but the kids all brought their books, their textbooks. And you just heard chuk, 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 people looking for it in the text. And then suddenly they decided, no, they weren't going to. They were just going to put their books down on their laps and listen to the adaptation. And they were roaring, shouting by the end of it. Don't do it. Don't do it. She's alive. He's alive. You know, and it was, and it became really participatory. And that, and uh, again, a story of, 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 the, the way people um, relate to theater, performed theater, Shakespeare as well, doing uh, Merchant of Venice and the, it was supper time in 
uh, in the house of someone who'd just been to see Merchant of Venice and the mother called and she didn't come down to supper and the mother called again and she didn't come down to supper and eventually the mother went upstairs and said, what are you doing? Your supper's getting cold. She said, wait, wait, wait. I'm on Act 4, Scene 2 and I just want to get to the end of Act 4 of Merchant of Venice, for heaven's sake, because she'd seen this modern dress version with music. Yeah. So, you know, adaptation for me is it's crucial. It's crucial that children see it, that young people see it and relate to it. And I swear that more books get sold when you've done a when you've done a production. Yeah. In show. yeah. Well, I'm glad and I touched on I'm glad I touched on your hobby horse, Janice, because I've, I've been recently reading so many books by local writers and I keep thinking, oh, it would make such a good play. It would make such a good movie. Um, Yvette, which so, brings me to... So okay, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> we'll lobby. <laughs> and Yvette, you can be part of the lobby group too, because one of the things I wanted to ask you um, on Janice's point was, is there room for scripts? Um, you, you know, uh, who's who's the gentleman um, who does all the scripts for the Zavalaza? Um, Robin Milan. Robin Milan. Sorry, yeah. Robin Milan. Robin and, Milan. And, you know, and and there's something about having a script. And I recently spoke to a woman who had written a script with footnotes at the bottom. So the script sort of really had it had meat. It wasn't just words. He said. He said. Um, do you think that there could be room for scripts so that all those young people who were sitting watching Mother to Mother at, in that church and observatory? Um, they could actually pick up a script and, and participate themselves and it would really would get to them directly. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's a huge, there's huge room for that. And um, I think that the moment you start to engage with the script as, you know, uh, yourself, um, reading it aloud or acting it out, it, it becomes a part of you on some level. Um, and so the understanding goes so much deeper. So I, you know, I would absolutely endorse that, that approach. And we have done it very successfully with a number of other productions, not unfortunately yet with Mother to Mother, but maybe that's uh, what we should be doing next. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, we don't have any questions at this stage. A little Q&A box if anybody has got questions. Sadly, it looks like we're not going to get our lovely Cindy Way, which is a heartbreak but we will be talking to her again on Friday I think at five o'clock um, we'll be talking about teaching reconciliation in school and she's got so much to say on that in fact we talk about mother to mother Yvette but Cindy well, I'm, I hope I'm not giving anything away but I be believe she's busy with a book called um, stories from the village uh, or thereabouts and I'm thinking that's no. got to be I can am I right Cindy Way? Can you hear me? Yes. It's called um, when the village Okay. And do you think that it might be, if you gave it to an actor, do you think it might also be a series of plays? I was going to call Janice after this. <laughs> because she volunteered. <laughs> That's now I had it. <laughs> she comes now I had it now. They, they, should, they should give it to me, give it to me. Today I got the proofs of the novel. It's coming out in, in May. Oh, wonderful. I'm so looking forward to that. Um, and Cindy, you, you and I have an appointment. All right. I, you and I will have an appointment soon. <laughs> yes, but hopefully not on Zoom. But it will be lovely if you could get together. But it makes me think that um, uh, it makes me think that there's there's so much more that can happen here. Um, and the one thing, the wonderful thing about you, Cindy Way, is that you were able to do the adaptation from the book because you know about the stage. You've written your own piece. You you know about working on the stage. Is it a medium that you really enjoy as well as writing novels and books? I wish I had more expertise in it. I love it. I love writing. I have, I have um, three published plays. In fact, Mother to Mother is now in the process we're discussing. So it should be out before June, I mean, it's ready. I think it's going to, I just haven't been given a date um, of publication. I wish I could, you know, write more plays and more children's books and more novels, but in one there's only so much energy. Well, I love you... plays, I love reading them. 
Yes, and, and I do because I think that you also love the spoken word. I have seen you delivering stories to children and I think the energy with which you write, you recreate in the energy that you, the, with which you deliver it in person. So you are, you are an all-rounder, Cindy Way. So, um, well, okay, me, that's yes. what the stage is, storytelling. So, so the script of Mother to Mother, uh, the one-person play, is going to be published next week and available during the second week of April. Well, that is fantastic news. Dusanka, thank you very much. And I suppose, you know, one doesn't want to get carried away here, but I'm feeling for the movie. Are we likely to see Mother to Mother the movie? What do you think? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> and Janice, would you be up for directing it? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's such a it's a film as opposed to the um, art of adaptation for the stage is so different. Fewer words, but when you when you look at something like um, Mandisa mm -hmm. going to buy the fit cook when she's a little girl in Blowfly, and the, the mm. description of the fit cook, cook cooking in the pot and her being given one by the by the lady who's running an extra one. Um, that stuff is so, that kind of detail is so brilliant on film. And while you can't put all of that into a stage adaptation because of the time and because of the main line of the story having to get to go through, somehow you can add all those visual layers, facets, um, pictures of life as it is without having to say it in words and speak about it. So yes, absolutely. It would make a wonderful, wonderful film. Yvette, closing, what, um, are you feeling very optimistic about the world of theatre, despite the fact of, of, of theatre closing all over the place, particularly for young people? Are we going to start to see theatre on phones, do you think? <laughs> well, we have already started to see theatre on phones. Uh, we have. Um, one of, one of my staff members, Faye Kabali Kag, was at the forefront of that. She has created a piece of WhatsApp theatre, which is on a phone. Yes. And, yeah. So, um, uh, yes, indeed. I mean, look, we right now are very excited because we have a production which is going into schools in KZN around asthma. Um, it's a UK uh, and UKZN collaboration. Uh, with Assetage South Africa and so it's fantastic to be back in schools and to have young people seeing theatre in a school and getting their responses and we're getting such beautiful responses to that so I, I am obviously optimistic about the future of theatre for, for young people I'm very at the moment I'm very troubled about the future of theatre generally just in terms of this immediate period I mean the the news of the closing of the few guard yesterday it was just absolutely devastating um, and you know we and and we have a we have a crisis right now in terms of our artistic community that is has not been supported. So um, right now we are probably in the worst state we've ever been in. But I do have hope for the future, and I believe that theatre is, is has a very important role to play in rebuilding and in in ensuring young people's health and and well being and their mental health in particular. Well, I think theater will have to take to the streets and it won't be the first time, but I think that I can see players on the streets of Cape Town performing outside. Yes. Perhaps, perhaps that's a way forward. I think that we are out of time, but I want to say thank you so much. And, and if you guys get together and have tea, I would love to join you. Janice Honeyman. We must, we party. must, we must. It sounds like it's a We must. Cindy, Way, I can't wait. Congratulations on the script of Mother to Mother coming out. And I can't wait to see and to read your new book. And um, on Friday, follow electricity. And on Friday, we will indeed be talking again about teaching uh, reconciliation in schools with Yvette, with Cindy Way, and with Bobby I will Rothbard. go where there's electricity. I won't be stuck here. I will, I'm not dongling on Friday. I'm going to follow <laughs> the electricity. You are the electricity, Cindy Way. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, thank, thank you all for listening and enjoy the rest Lovely of the festival. Thank you all of you. The face is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.